there, Is there sound? sound? I'm hearing, I'm hearing you now. I'm not, I'm not hearing, hearing the board sound. sound. Hello. 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 The green light's on. I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Uh, beginning of late spring, early summer, we got a call from number five Algonquin Drive about a potential problem with the ditch that runs between the two properties. Uh, so we went out there and looked. Uh, there was a lot of erosion on number five side, uh, starting to encroach towards his garage and, you know, really making things unsafe there. I I went out with Carolyn to show her the, the site. We took a ride out there. I showed her. Uh, she was very concerned with it also. Uh, then I contacted uh, Shyla and Gary Pellisier from the conservation. We took a ride out there and uh, we looked at it and we, we uh, were thinking about what to do with the problem. Uh, Shyla at the time said that she she gave her gave permission to do repairs there. She said it was not in conflict with any wetlands or anything, so we could work there without any problem, uh, you know, DEP or conservation, et cetera. So I, I uh, proceeded with uh, meeting uh, a couple of different contractors and Stephen Konexny from Carl's. We went out there and looked at it and like, oh, we, I guess we could make like a Gabian wall or something, but that's going to cost us quite a bit of money. Uh, the head wall, the existing crossing of the road was in very bad condition. And we decided, well, maybe extending the culvert uh, between those two properties out to the property line where the grade of the land got a lot less violent where you could actually grade it and you could make it safe and etc was the best thing to do so we decided to do that so uh we uh put pipe in we're putting pipe in the ground and backfilling it as we went uh and then i got a call from shyla that uh the dep called her and they issued a cease and desist order of any work there uh, until more investigation was done, so we uh, we left and we we secured the site and we left. And Shyla was in contact with the DEP, you know, several times. They went out there and uh, did an you know a site invest visit an investigation. Uh, they came back. We had a Zoom meeting with myself, Carol, and Shyla, and the town's uh, legal staff i forget when that happened it was probably october and they said we'll be back in touch with you with our findings so and we we didn't hear anything until a couple of weeks ago that we got a letter from the state saying that we were in violation of multiple things uh through the dep and wetlands protection uh act so we uh, contacted uh, Comprehensive Environmental, which is a engineering firm that we use, and we've been working with Bob to try to come up with a remedy for this problem. So I, Bob has a lot of uh, more detail that he can explain to you. Sure. Uh, thanks, Scott. Uh, so, my name is Bob Hartzell. I'm a principal with the Comprehensive Environmental. I lead the ecological services practice for uh, CEI. Um, if you'd like, I can share a screen. I've got a couple of maps and figures that might help just, you know, uh, put some, uh, you know, better context to the area. Is that possible to share a screen? Um, no, I'm, I'm getting a message saying that uh, the host has disabled screen share. Try it again. Try it again. Okay. 
All, All right. right. I think we, we are good, good here. here. So, so just, just to um, kind, of kind of help provide context, context the area that we're looking at here is between Algonquin Drive and Wampanoag Drive, Drive uh, south, south of Rocky Hill, Hill Road, uh, and this area you see uh, with the red circle. circle. So um, as, as Scott mentioned, you know, there was, this culvert was put in to address you know, severe erosion, erosion and to stabilize the properties on to the north and to the south of the stream here. here. So um, at, at first glance, glance you know, you know just, just kind of looking at both the consent order, order that was sent in by DEP and just the information that's available by looking at maps and Google Earth and so on. Um, a few things came to light. So uh, this is just kind of zooming out. This is the um, wetland mapping layer that you can get from the state GIS, Mass GIS. So a few things jumped out at me right away. In terms of the decision making, you know, that this was not a a regulated, a regulated area where, where this culvert could be put in. in. Um, at, at first glance, glance I, I actually think that, you know, you know this, this is a, this is a case where um, the status of the stream as a, a regulated wetland at this point is really technically quite debatable. Um, so, so if you, you go if take, to take a step back, back. A, stream a stream is only regulated, regulated under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act. Act. Um, if, if it is intermittent and it has um, Wetlands, wetlands, vegetated, vegetated wetlands, wetlands upstream, upstream up gradient, gradient of it. So, so in, in this case, case here, if you were to go downstream a bit, these green areas are mapped wetlands. wetlands. So, so if the culvert was to go in in this section, section you've, you've got, got a mapped, mapped wetland, wetland area up gradient of it, so the Wetland Protection Act applies. In this, in this portion between Wampanoag Drive and Algonquin, you, you follow this up, and it's essentially, it looks very much like many of the, you know, ditched, uh, historic farmlands that are all over the uh, hazard, whether or not they're actively up farmed now. I mean, these, as I'm sure you all know, these, these ditches are everywhere. There is a larger forest and wetland area to the east, but it doesn't appear to be hydrologically connected. So at first glance, it very well, you know, somebody could have made a reasonable decision that this was an upland ditch, which was upgrading of all vegetated wetlands protected by the state law. Um, the DEP in their decision, um, and I don't really know, it's not clear to me if they actually ever field documented it, you know, with boots on the ground, but they, they're making the assertion that this uh, area is hydrologically connected to these very small um, pocket wetlands that are up here in the middle of the field. Whether or not that drainage actually ever gets down to Rocky Hill Road and you're able to jump across the street uh, is unclear, but at this, At this point, point, I think the town's, town's done, done the right thing in terms of signing the consent order. Um, I, really I really don't know that it's going to be too possible to fight DEP on this matter. matter. They've kind of dug, dug, dug their heels in on this hydrologic connection. connection. So, so at this point, point um, we're, we're just waiting for a signed consent order to come back, back to the town from DEP. That's my understanding that Carolyn signed it at the end of last week and sent it in. At the, At the point, point in time when, when that, that letter comes, comes in, in um, the, the clock, clock starts, starts ticking and there's a series of deliverables that the town has to um, you know, provide to DEP, starting first with the field assessment to you know, flag the, um, the bank of the stream and the portion that was filled in the culvert. And then ultimately by mid-June of this year, having a completed um, remediation um, you know, constructed, whatever that may end up being. So that, so that design, design process, process will happen, you know, you know between now and June over, over the next few months. months. So um, that's, that's the, the quick overview, just to, just to let you see just the aerial um, imagery. This, this is the area where the culvert went in, more or less. And then and that, that, you know, uh, ditch, ditch that I was talking about is more or less right here, here very much has the look of an upland channel. channel. Um, um, if you zoom in, in, oh, actually, that might be it. Yeah, you can you can see the you know the grass bottom of this channel in this area. So. Um, the, the wetland status, status, although debatable, I think that ship has sailed, and the best we can do right now is to work with DP and come up with a plan to, you know, both um, fix or remediate what was done, in their opinion, but also provide a solution that's stable, uh, perhaps pulling back the banks uh, a bit so that they don't have as steep of a slope. Uh, that will require some coordination with property owners on either side. And... Um, I think, I think that's, that's about, about the best overview I can give. give. I'm happy, happy to, to happy to answer any questions. questions.
question for Scott. Is, at face value, that looks like it's on private property. Is that true or not true? We, we, the town of Hadley has it, the access to the ditch. So we have an easement. Yes. So why are we responsible to fix it? I know we can, if we have an easement, we can go in if we cause a problem to repair it. But why does the town have to be responsible for repairing this if it's on private property? I, I would be assuming because it's our water that's causing the problem. It's uh, some road water and ditch water that's going through there that was causing the problem. I, I, I guess it's our, it's our water and it, it in sense. Yeah, it's our ditch is what you're saying. Right. And it's caused the erosion. I, I would like town council to chime in on that one if, uh, if we're really responsible for it on somebody else's property. Okay. okay. The, the ditch is kind of like a no man's land. There's a property pin on one side of it and a property pin on the other. Okay. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's just, it's just curious to me that the town is responsible but i i understand the the water if it's coming off the roads then we're somewhat responsible if not fully responsible are there any other questions, questions? anything from you bob no well, uh, uh, i think uh, uh, that's the overview i think most of uh, the, the real um New information, information will come once we're out there, there um, after DEP has signed that letter and uh, authorized us to be you know, your consultant for this project, which is part of their review process. Uh, then we can get out there and begin, you know, uh, getting that bank flag and, and start the design process for um, the fix. We need a motion to approve it or just information? Yeah, I wanted this was important. Is, is there a potential that they'll make us backpedal and, and remove what we've already done? I think there is a, a very high percentage chance that that would be required. I can't, I, I started to go down that road a little bit last week in a discussion with uh, the reviewer from SPP. I think that's where his head is at right now. Um, we, he did leave the door open a bit for there being, you know, uh, an opportunity for discussion. You know, you know, one way or the other, given, given how steep those banks were and the erosion that was happening, um, there's, there's no way you can create a stable slope without having an equal impact to the bank, you know, the same linear footage of bank impact that the culvert has created. So, um, you know, I think there's going to need to be some discussion along the way. Um, we'll have to come up with a couple of design concepts and see which, if there are any um, alternatives that are acceptable to DP that would be short of, of completely removing the culvert. But I think as of right now, I think there's a, a, a pretty good chance that that's something that DP is going to push hard on. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the update and this will be continued. Haley, could you turn the lights back on, please? All right. Moving along, we'll go to public comment. <clears throat> Anyone here for public comment? No one is indicating they're here for public comment. All right. Consent agenda. We have on the consent agenda warrants AP 2330, AP 2329, AP 2329S, AP 2330S. PR 2313, PR 2314, PR 2311, and PR 2312. We have a one day alcohol license for Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce, Margarita Madness at the Pyramid Mall. International transfer, internal transfer, a DPW, Jabaya. Joseph Meyer to wastewater treatment operator, rate of pay $26 per hour, effective February 4th. Board of Health public nurse appointment, Roxanne Dunn, for seven and a half hours a week, 
rate of pay $25 per hour effective January 30th. Declaration of surplus property, server flusher and miscellaneous water filters. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Joyce? I'll second. Can I, by Molly? I'm going to ask a question first. Discussion. What is a server flusher? <laughs> It's it's the old original sewer flusher. It's trailer mounted. Uh, is it sewer flusher. Or yes, sewer flusher? sewer sewer flusher oh, jet okay. rider. I'm sorry. It says server flusher. Yeah, it says it's a sewer flusher, and okay. and uh, it's water fittings, not filters. <laughs> All right, so we now have a sewer flusher. Sewer flusher and water filler. Fittings. 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 Okay. Well, I think IT, sorry. Okay. Um, but will you also, I would ask that you make Monday all day, uh, all alcohol license contingent upon inspection by uh, fire and building. Okay. Anything else? I have a motion in a second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. 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 Parsons? Yes. And Iser? Yes. Okay. And Joyce, can you hear me okay? I can. I can. Perfect. All right. We are going to once more jump out of order because to 5.6 because Alex has to leave to uh, film a different event. So the Charter Spectrum Questionnaire, which is in our documents. Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Good. Great. All right, I'm going to share my screen. All right, so I did add some things um, per Jane's conversation. I didn't add everything in there yet, Jane, but I did add some, but one of the questions in there, um, along with some other questions like what's your annual income and uh, rent. Um, how does mm -hmm. do you guys need a, um, a kind of a practice of what this is all yes. about? Yes, yes, I think that would be useful if you don't mind. Now, so about a year and a half ago, a little longer, we started the process for the renewal, um, for the renewal process for um, charter for cable, and um, we tried to get a group together, and after COVID, and that did not, we did not get a group, so Alex agreed to start to run with this a little bit more. So uh, we are getting close to the deadline. So uh, one of the major parts of it is to get in, uh, input from the community as to what their cable service has been like, what they're looking for, uh, amongst some other things. So this is part of the outreach. So Alex put together a questionnaire, which is uh, uploaded on board docs, and then Jane is, has added a couple of things. Is that, I, I'm not sure what you want. Well, one of the things I want to make sure that we get information from is why people don't have cable, because that would be useful. And is Actually, that because of where they're living? So I've asked for if you don't have cable, is it because of your address? Because I know some areas of town don't get cable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can but, I ask what the relevance is of the income bands? Those seem like pretty small income bands. Are they small? That's how I, I did it. I can make them a little more larger, or give them get, give less options. I think less options, like three. Yeah. Because generally, people they don't like giving income information, and I think like the broader you make it, the more likely people will respond accurately. Okay, I could do that. Um, and you, and you don't, don't have, have you don't, don't have, have all of the parts of town either. either in the first question. question. So you don't have you don't have anything on Bay Road area, which, yeah, which would be Hartsbrook area, I guess you would call it, or any part of Bay Road from the beginning of Route Nine all the way to all the way to um, Atkins, actually almost. Oh, there's Bay Road. Okay.
Oh, no, it's not 116 at all. Uh, okay. No, it's different. I thought that was Bay Road, too. Okay. So, what, on income, let's do, uh, what? I would do, like, 130, 30, like, 30, 30 to 60. Yeah, I would even go, like, 75, 75 yeah. to 200. I mean, yeah. again, I'm not sure what the relevance I is do. of income. Should I just, should we just strike it, then? We could just yeah. strike the okay. whole question. Yeah, let's strike the whole question. Reason you needed it. No, let's get rid of it. Okay. Good. Okay, I think. Um, I put down owner rent. Um, some, if you rent, sometimes they give you cable on cable as part of your lease. Uh, I know when I had my apartment, that was like that. Um, um, if an own, obviously you, you have the choice of whether or not you want cable or not. Instead of neither, would you want to like put other and then like offer an explanation? Because that seems what you camp out in the backyard. I mean, <laughs> whatever. You never know. Yeah. You never know. It might. Other, it's, I agree. Please okay. specify. <laughs> My mother doesn't pay for it, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. So, um, if other, please explain. Please specify. That's fine. And then we have the age question. I only put over your over age of 65. Should we make that broader? Should we strike it? Should we keep it? We use 60 in Hadley as a age of senior. BG 60. Well, how will that impact the results? I mean, I think the money thing is can impact whether I can afford cable or not. Right. right. If I'm over 65 or under 65, I don't think that matters unless the money comes into play. So I don't see any point to that, but that's my opinion. I put it there because I know I just want to figure out because uh, I know you know obviously the younger you are, the more or less the less likely you are going to have cable um, because of the many products that are out there that are more affordable um, and more technological. We could also strike that question too. Well, that's uh, like I said, Alec. That's my opinion. Okay. I, I haven't heard anybody else agree with anybody me. Anybody so. else? I mean, if you're going to have the age question there, then it might be more helpful to have the an income bracket as well um, because sometimes those two things can go hand in hand right um, when it comes to you know not just talking about affordability but also um, someone who might be a little bit older might not really have as much of a need for it right um, or potentially not you know know all the things that they can do with it Okay. So, I mean, there's a thing as well, too, because people that are older might be in a more restricted income. So either you would strike both of the questions or have both of the questions, if in, we in did, my opinion. But my bet is the fewer questions, the more people will respond. Right. Right. Okay. Both let's, let's strike that, then, if yeah. that's okay, everyone. And can I, I mean, does, this, does it make sense for the select board to be doing, doing this, or can... We just we could review it and come back next week. Well, no, we have we're on a time. We are very, very. This is very, very timely. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, can we just just go ahead to you know finalize this and maybe just run it by you and Jane before it goes out? I mean, I don't I don't know how granular we need to get tonight, going question by question. I just a uh, question for I just I, don't know, I almost feel like. I'm, Objection relevance. Um, relevance for four. Is there like a. Yeah, we can get rid of that one too. Yeah. So you all have this. If you want to look at it later yeah. and comment back to Carolyn or me. Yeah, does that work? That works. I'll do that. Okay. But okay. soon. Yeah. Okay. okay. That works for me. All right. All right. Thanks for doing that, Alex. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. A lot of questions about cable around here. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, and Carolyn, are we discussing the liaison thing too? Yeah, but do you have that separate in the... It's, yes, it's 5.4. Okay, uh, I just got to leave by 7, that's all. Oh, I thought it was 6.30. Okay. 
We should. We may be there by then. Six thirty, so that he could set up the ball game. Okay. I have, I pretty much have it all set up. So. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Alex. Age and dementia friendly Hadley update. We've had two weeks to review the work of the age and dementia group that we appointed in June of 2021. Their work with the consultant from Pioneer Valley, Becky, who is here tonight, thank you, um, has produced an in-depth picture of the challenges that face Hadley seniors. Some of these are already being addressed. Today we are asked to adopt this plan, the Community Assessment and Action Plan. What adoption means is that the select board and the town will apply a age-friendly lens to all future decisions that are made pertaining to the town. In addition, we are being asked to okay Hadley joining the Pioneer Valley AARP network of age and dementia-friendly communities. Also to be recognized by the Massachusetts Councils on Aging as an age and dementia-friendly town. Those two forms are in the docs. And one of them looks like there's a lot to be done, but that isn't us. That's the age and dementia friendly group that will do all of that. They just are asking for our signature on this. Are there any questions? Haley's here and Becky's here. Should we have any questions? I just want to thank the group for, I know it's a tremendous amount of work, time, effort that went into this. And I think the, the outcome's great. So I need a motion then. Uh, I'll make a motion that we accept the community assessment and uh, approve the action plan for the age and dementia. I'll second by. Second by Amy. Any further discussion? And also, did that include signing the? Okay. Um, all those. Uh, roll call vote, please, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Keegan. Yes. 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 Nevinsmith. Yes. Parsons. Yes. Eisen. Yes. Thank you very much. All right. Next is the Hadley Housing Production Plan. We also reviewed this. And are we looking for a motion on this, Jim, or do you want to talk to this? Um, well, <clears throat> if you had a chance to review it, we, looked, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago basically some of the highlights of the information and facts. Uh, we need is a motion. This has to be approved by the select board and the planning board, and then it goes on to the state and it becomes part of a comprehensive production plan by the town. And it can help the town if they apply, if somebody applies for grants and stuff like that and various little things. So I'm looking for, I'm this, unless you have questions, just a motion from the select board to approve it. I'll make, I'll make a motion, motion to, to accept, accept the Town of Hadley housing, housing production plan and, and all the work that went into it. Thank, thank you so much. much. Second by Molly. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, roll call, please. Roll call for Keegan? Yes. Chuggler? Yes. 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 Parsons? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right. The department fee. You're, you're good to go, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Good work. The department fees update is attached. Thanks for putting this together and taking all of those sheets we had on our last meeting and putting the ones that were pertinent in this. Carolyn, do you want to talk to this? So I, I still see, think that this will be, um, you, you have more time to keep looking at it, but you do have some department heads here who do, who are responsible for fees and permitting and licenses. So I think that I would love it if you guys had any questions about any of these or want to hear what their recommendations are. We can start to do that. We do have some department heads here. I'm, I'm having a little bit of a hard time here, hearing, Carolyn. Carolyn. Yes, yes, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> so if we have department heads here that would like to speak to us, that would be great. All right, let's start with DPW. Do you want to talk to us? <laughs> Since you're first on this list. Jane, would you like me to share the schedule? Yes, I think that would be good. Thank you. 
Be before you start, Scott, when was the last time we updated this fee schedule? We couldn't find any information on that. Okay. These so, numbers have been around for quite for some time. Okay. We did a fee review when I was on the select board previously, but not all of the departments recommended changes at the time. Okay. Do you want me to just go down the list or? Or just some of them that you feel will really make well, a difference. So, so we, we did some research on this. We, we contacted some surrounding communities and got, you know, their rates, et cetera. And we looked at some of the factors that, of our own, like, you know, traveling out, you know, to do a final read on a house water meter, you know, gap, you know, wear and tear on the vehicle, somebody's time to do it, uh, processing that on our end and the collector's office and things of that nature. So some of the numbers are what we felt were appropriate also. So like the grease trap inspection, we, we charge 75 now. We, we felt that going to 100 just with the times and the cost of fuel and everything and uh, the paperwork and stuff that's involved with it, $100, we would recommend. Uh, the public way uh, slash trench permit, uh, just 150 is goes. It's less than other communities, but it's more than what we're charging. We do have some paperwork and stuff that goes along with that, so we thought that was appropriate. Uh, driveway permit, uh, again, it's a paperwork thing for us and somebody going out and doing an inspection so we, we decided to go to 100 a lot of the other towns around us they're a lot more scott just go to the big ones that are big increases this ones uh we are the water service ones uh, mm -hmm. so a, a one inch line which is pretty typical for a house currently we, we charge 400 uh doing a uh contacting other communities and stuff we feel 800 is uh, an appropriate fee. Uh, same with an inch and a half line. You're starting to get into those size pipes, inch and a half to four, six, eight, or more commercial size lines. And these kind of somewhat coincide with other communities. Uh, the bigger ones, eight and 12 inch, we thought our rate was good on that, so we're leaving that alone. And uh, second water meter. Uh, we uh it was fifty dollars for an irrigation meter and we're we're looking at not having second meters anymore for allowing for any new irrigation meters with all the water use restrictions that are coming into play uh outside watering is going to become a thing of the past in any kind of drought situation our current permit prior to uh Think, don't hold me on the dates i believe it was july or i'm sorry january 1. our old permit said that we could allow outside watering under certain conditions if we pump under so much gallons of water a day we're good uh, if we go over that we have to implement a mandatory or voluntary restriction then if it goes further mandatory well that's all gone away we have to follow the state's drought uh, asset assessment for the whole entire state. If the state says drought, we are in drought, no watering. So with that being said, it's, it's really, I feel it's really gonna come to an end. It seems like they put drought restrictions in pretty quick. So irrigation is different than farming. Correct. Okay. Right. That's for people who have sprinklers. Yes. yes. Yeah. And how does that get charged, Scott? If I if I'm on sewer and I have an irrigation meter as well, do I get charged the same money as somebody who's not on sewer, or is there a reduced the, rate? The irrigation meter takes the sewer charge off the bill. That's basically what it's for. So okay. we're. We're, another reason we're saying that is for people to follow the drought restriction regulations because we have a lot of people that do not follow it and we're feeling that if you want to not follow the rules 
pay the rate because you're gonna be paying a sewer on that usage also. We feel that it's a good, good policing thing that maybe it's gonna get more people's attention that you're, if you're gonna water, you're gonna be paying a lot more money. I agree with you that everybody should be treated or, or behave the same when there's a drought. And I know that there's people that don't, but I'm a little concerned with the number of people that are on sewer versus the ones that aren't on sewer. And you're, we are going to penalize the people who are on sewer and not the ones that aren't on sewer if both of them were disobeying the drought, you know, the water ban. Uh, the person that's not on sewer isn't going to be impacted at all. The person that is on sewer is going to be impacted tremendously. So there's a little bit of uh, disconnect there between the two. I so think. when you read the meters, does it say irrigation versus domestic? Yes. yes. So you could actually see that I was using my irrigation meter during a drought? Oh, yes. So is it possible to, in a different way, have some kind of penalty built in that the town could fine these people because they are using the irrigation when they're not supposed to? We, we could like we that. could look something into like that. that keeps it keeps Randy's position of um, we we don't as a recent Randy we haven't had a lot of people coming in for irrigation meters that are on sewer a lot of the new homes that are being constructed are not on sewer so it's kind of uh, doesn't apply to them. I I think that most of the people that have irrigation meters and not have them already on sewer so it's like okay. it's most people we don't get a lot of requests for them i understand what you're saying and so there's if i if i'm on sewer and i have an irrigation meter and i don't uh am i grandfathered in yes okay all right then i can live with that okay um sue you have a question no, no i just have a comment um uh the People who have irrigation meters, they're charged a huge rate. It's a five dollars, and I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'm, I'm blanking that out, but it's over five dollars per hundred cubic feet. Um, so it's. Um, I mean, I understand where Scott's going with this, and as long as he's not going to, as long as we're going to grandfather in irrigation meters that are currently there because that's these are not the McMansions with irrigation systems uh, that are putting these in these are you know the smaller ranch homes that uh, just didn't want to pay for sewer to get their water uh, to get the water to uh, irrigate outside just just wanted to make that clear so it's already a higher rate than a domestic rate. Very, Very high. high. Yeah, yeah, it's over five dollars uh, per, per hundred cubic feet. And a domestic rate for that same amount would be. Well, well it starts at two fifty eight for uh, up to five hundred cubic feet, uh, and then it's three three forty. <laughs> Gosh, I don't have the rates in front of me, but it's it's, it's much higher. higher. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for Scott or anything else? You have grease trap on here twice, line 22 and line three. Yeah, that's that's a typo. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Um, Thanks, Scott. Thank you very much. Tommy, do you want to talk about electrical or just go on to um, inspections? So um, the building was adjusted. I've been here almost three years, and it was prior to that. So it's about three years since the building fees have been looked at and um, adjusted. I did a little chart. I don't know if you had that with all the communities showing. Um, yeah. And we actually have one out towards the Cape Marion that's identical. Um, and we're pretty much, in, as far as the building goes, we're pretty much in range. The only one that I would even suggest would be the um, actual square footage for a new residential home and um, 
multifamily, you know, commercial. If you even wanted to, it's just the only thing that we're, we're a little behind. Um, as far as what we're bringing in, we're, we're fine with all that. Um, another thing that Didi will be able to explain the electrical proposal from, from Paul. Um, and he's also proposing to raise the fee, the um, payment per inspection to 50 for, um, you know, per inspection for the um, inspectors, which, you know, he had just proposed for electrical, but the last time the board did it, which was, I believe, two years ago, it was across the board. Everybody was the same plumbing, electrical, mm -hmm. and my alternates. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, it's comparable. Some towns are percentage, or the town will take a certain, uh, example, Sunderland, they take $15 for the plumbing and electrical, and they get all the rest. So it's um, it's a tough one to figure for that, but Didi can explain the, you know, the adjustments with the electrical, but that was one thing that Paul had suggested is if we could raise the payment to them. Okay, I'm just, I want to stay, before we go to Didi, I want to see if there's any question on the um, building permit side. What is your largest increase here? The two in yellow were just the, the suggested, which would go from right. 50 to 65 cents per thousand, and... Um, Uh, 50 to 70, I'm sorry, yeah, 50 to 75 for commercial. Okay. All right. Electrical, please. On the electrical part, um, Paul Miller, um, he's still also a licensed electrician, too, so he works with several other towns. Um, so he knows pretty much what he pays for the fees. And so he brought just some of them up to, you know, um, with the other, some of the other towns have nothing really drastic um just that some of them you know will take at least two inspections so that's why he felt that um they needed to go up a little bit more as far as that just to cover for the inspections and is there a i know that board of health if they they have a second inspection to make sure you've complied but if you don't and they're going back again and again does yes, so, so on the bottom for um, the electrical and uh, actually plum gas and plumbing, um, it's a $75 fee if they have to do a reinspection fee. Um, and it's been the same with building. We have lately, especially with building, um, many people calling them out to do inspections and they're not ready for their inspections. We were kind of a little lenient before on it, but uh, some people the same people kept, you know, doing it over and over. And so we finally said, okay, we really need to, you know, stop because it, it, it is taking up too much of their time. So basically they get a second one and then the third one we, you know, just the extra 75. Do you have any questions for... Do you make them pay those fees before you give them a CO? Oh, yes. Yes. You know, I'll ask them to drop it off or... You know, that's the, the, the good thing with it is the final letter of completion even, you know, on a smaller job, you know, they have to get that, pay that before they do. And it's, it's going to prepare them. I can tell it's already helping, you know, you have to do it because otherwise they'll take advantage of any of us. No, I understand that. Yeah, and we also are now, especially, um, I mean, Tommy's very across the board, especially with the building that, um, that the taxes and water are paid before we even issue a permit. Um, because that wasn't always happening before, um, but Tommy has made sure, because that's how he has done it in all the other towns, and so, and it is supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that it's done. Thank you, that the town appreciates that. Thanks. <laughs> um, and then as far as gas and plumbing, um, Dennis felt that he was on board uh, just along with all the other towns, so he didn't have any increases at all. And I did want to just give one example uh, to explain the justify, I guess would maybe a better word, for the, um, the raise in the um, payment to the inspectors. An example would be electrical. We brought in $49,215, and, um, and, and Paul does the majority of them. This 1099 was 16000 so there's a huge gap in what we're paying this compared to what we're bringing in. All right. Any questions? No. All right. Moving right along. Board Thank of you. Health. Thank you. Is there anybody on Zoom on Board of Health? 
Okay. And Okay, Mike. Good evening. Uh, so the last time we did a re revision to this was 2009. Um, I surveyed a minimum of four departments uh, locally, Northampton, Amherst, Holyoke, um, and then a smaller community as well. Uh, basically the biggest ones for us is just getting us up to speed for uh, the hourly rate for the inspection or for a detail, which went up to $65 an hour. The other part that I noticed, uh, reviewing our uh, permits for underground storage tanks. We were doing it by on the tank basis and it was not very, it wasn't fair across the board because we have, for example, uh, the stop and shop gas station has one 30,000 gallon tank so they pay 150 bucks every three years versus uh, the Pride Station or Cumberland Farms where they have multiple tanks so they're paying 400 to 600 dollars for the three years. So we changed it to the gallonage which is done in Amherst. Uh, it makes more sense and it's, it'll keep it consistent across the board, um, especially with the time frame it takes for us to generate the permits and do the inspections annually. Uh, life safety inspections basically went up. The only thing I can tell you is we just did adopt the new edition of uh, 527 CMR1 and NFPA standard. So there will be a couple additions to this under the inspections that will remain consistent basically under uh, residential and commercial for, for example, for solar installations. They're now, uh, if it's a one kilowatt hour or I mean, it's basically one kilowatt hour triggers a permit through the fire department. So there will be a plan review fee and uh, a permit fee involved with that. Um, we're also, there's some additional language under NFPA for food trucks. However, we were proactive with food trucks because of um, some pretty serious incidents at some of, uh, some of the venues that they had. So we actually put together, you guys actually had put that into place uh, a while ago. So that fee is, is already in there. So um, as far as plan reviews for new construction, uh, basically we stay consistent with the communities around us. Uh, new construction commercially, we did go up for the square footage fee on that. We don't see it very often, but it is an, a substantial amount of work. So we went from the four cents to five cents and then six cents over 30,000 square feet. Any questions? So do we need to... And then Park and Rec was the only other one. Oh, Park and Rec, but is Gary Greg here? Okay. Um, fine. So do we need to approve all of these or? If you have enough time to review them, this is what you need. Would you like another two weeks to look at these numbers or should we move on them tonight? Well, we, we had it on previously. It. It's last just they were, in, they were in messy form. Different places. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll well, make a motion to approve as presented. No, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve as presented. Roll call vote, please. Oh, oh, yes, sir. If I just ask about the additions for the new code, are you comfortable with that? And then, or do we need to come back and vote those in once they're put on the table? The new code is included in this? It's not. They're not, they're they're not in here because we don't have them. We'll add them. We'll do them again when you're ready. All right. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. 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 Parsons? Yes. Isaac? Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, private Ways. Okay. Private Ways. That's me. Just continue our discussion of last. Yes. So, since our last meeting, this was in regards to Birch Meadow Drive. The DPW director and I met with the homeowner who's got the issue with the not being a private way. And in the conversations and just walking around, it got me to thinking about why that street 
and the people on it are in the position they're in. And I think that the town has some form of responsibility for it happening because we plow and sand the roads. And I realize that it's a public safety issue and I don't disagree with that, but I believe that we as a town should make, and, and this is my opinion, trying to, to, to think this through and try to make it so that it doesn't happen again. I don't see any major subdivisions coming in town again, but you never know. But anyhow, so we plow and salt the roads, and if I live on one of the streets that is not accepted by the town at this point, my assumption is I'm paying taxes, they're coming, the town plows and salts the road, they must be gonna maintain it, must be a town way. I, as John Q. Citizen, don't have any idea how to verify that, and I suppose the onus is on me to know that, but in this day and age, people just don't check into that kind of stuff. So I had a couple of thoughts, one of which is to send letters to the developers that are still remaining and people on the streets explaining why we plow and sand and explain that the town does not own the road, it's still a private way. And possibly when a road gets approved, if there are any more, or even maybe with the ones that are, that are, we still have in existence that aren't approved, they ought to be made to put private way signs up until they're approved by the town, just so that there's no question that the, the town is doing a favor, if you will, and make people aware as best we can that they're, it, they're living on a private road. So I, I, I'm just concerned about wh what kind of pushback the town could get from somebody uh, that is in a situation similar to Mr. Sibley. Wouldn't, I'm assuming if somebody builds a house, they have an attorney, they have a real estate attorney who handles the closing. Mm -hmm. Would, wouldn't they be made aware at the time? One would think. <laughs> uh, but other houses on Birch Meadow Road have changed hands. Oh, yeah. And nobody picked it up until now. Till now. So the only time I've been called in the office about the, um, is the here. Because it's in the, when they were buying the lots, it's in there that at that point they have to maintain that percentage mm -hmm. of the road. So as those are sold, it's right in the deep, I guess. Yeah. Right. The only yeah. time I've been questioned by an attorney or something well, like that. I was doing some research on Kent Lorana up there, High Meadow, and that was Doug Cole, Tofino Associates, and he wrote, the, his attorney wrote the deed, and after the description, he makes a disclaimer that the developer, Tofino Associates, is going to maintain ownership of all the roadways, but that very rarely happens. So, I mean, it's, it's not, the town's responsibility necessarily, but because we are doing what we do, I think that it is our responsibility from that respect to make people aware that we're doing this out of the kindness of our hearts or the concern for your safety, but if something catastrophic were to happen to your road, the town is not responsible for it. I think that, I think your idea of sending that letter and then posting a sign saying private way so any n potentially new person who comes to look at my house for sale on that road will say, oh, it's a private way. What does that mean? You're selling me a house. What does this mean? And then it's, it's public mm -hmm. information. I think that's, a, I, I like that. I don't think there are that many people that would be that many letters, form letter. You know, we've done a survey of our roads. There are we can perhaps in the letter say there are um, conditions. Some of these roads are still being developed and your developer is supposed to make it presentable to the town and others have been abandoned and there are ways you can make it 
public road, but it costs money. Mm -hmm. Can I? I'm so sorry. Can I um, just go? Since Mr. Mas Maximoski chose to stay here. That's my choice. Yeah. So. Jim, I'm just I'm going back a ways, but at one point in time, I know the planning board came to the select board and we had a focused discussion on how many of these private ways remained. Yes. I want to say it was like five to seven at the time. Something around that range. Yes. Right. <clears throat> Some of them have been have been uh, I know Holly Way, which was the one over in uh, Rocky Hill, if you would, right. leading out towards the. Um, Mount Warner Wells was accepted. One of the first ones that was a real effort to get accepted because that was another developer that kind of isn't around anymore. There's a few others off of Shattuck Road and um, that uh, are not accepted yet because those developers can't be located. They sold off the last few lots and they left the area, and we don't even know where, we have no idea how to contact them or where they might be. And that's, those are going to be a bit of an effort to get. We can be done, but it's, a, it's, it's quite an effort to get them accepted. And the people that live on those roads also would like to get them accepted because obvious reasons. But since then, well, you know, the planning board has put into the subdivision regs um, that we changed a couple of years ago or so that this really can't happen again because part of the submission pa submission package is a statement with a I don't know what the right word is a deed that says the town can take over this road when it's all done so we've we've, we've addressed the issue not to happen in the future but we have a few roads that right now that that's that is still an issue luckily in Birch Meadow and the ones Birch Meadow is, a, is, a, is one that, although it's a lot of paperwork, because the individual homeowners are owned to the center of the road, it's taking a little piece of each person's property. The ones that are going to be a bit more of a problem is where the homeowners don't own the road and it still belongs to the original developer. That's going to be a bit more of an issue. There are ways to do it, but it's a little bit more cumbersome. See, and I, I thought that the goal at the time was we were hoping to come up with some sort of an action plan to deal with that, the old inventory. And so, Randy, what you're saying right now is you're just suggesting that we just put people on notice in case. Well, that's one of the things. I mean, I, I, I just, <clears throat> I know that I don't think with the town put a time limit on when these roads can be accepted, right? Correct. No. So, because we got 20-year-old roads that sh technically should have been accepted, you know, 15, 16 years ago, and so the longer it goes on, the harder it is for people to understand that. What do you mean this is a private road? Yep. And, and and the longer it goes on, the more the road likely needs some kind of an upgrade. And the town really doesn't want to accept the, doesn't want to necessarily accept the road that needs repairs. We'd like to accept the road that's in decent condition. And some of these older roads, like Randy says, there. I mean, the newest one is a day away, and that wasn't built on for t over ten years, and that shows cracks already. Some of the older ones, like Bayberry and a few others off of Shattuck, those are pushing twenty plus years old. I mean, I, I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, it seems like the, we still have the problem and we, um, we should be maybe thinking about how to, how to resolve the problem. So yeah, I agree with that. The other question is, if we are sending letters out, do we also send them to uh, class three, which is private ways, town not responsible or liable for maintenance and repair? That's the ones that are owned like by the housing authority green leaves corporation and westgate center drive and then the common ways number four which are more uh, individual people's roads driveways yeah, I, I think if the town's not taking care of it at, right now then it's not an issue i live on a private road 
and it was approved that way in two thousand and two so i know my status i don't expect the town to plow i don't expect the town to salt and they don't again i'm aware of my situation but most people that are on these roads that aren't accepted that they assume are town roads have no idea what is what my their concern potential is, is we send these notices out and then somebody goes what oh my gosh are you kidding me well what do i do and we're like well, i don't know <laughs> you know so yeah, I, I yeah, you know, so I'm wondering if we should try to come up with like a, a an internal work group or something, you know, including the, some of the board, I would think, just to try to or make figure or out. make some kind of a, a brief enclosure that says it's a long road to get your road accepted. It has to pass DPW's acceptance for condition and the legal ramifications of ownership have to be shown. I don't know if there's an easy answer to any of these. Right. Um, I would, I would, vent, I would guess that a lot of the people that live on these roads, especially on Bayberry, know that it's a private road. They've been after the kind of hit or miss, been at the planning board. What can we do? But nobody's ever really taken the step like they have on Birch Meadow to really try to get it accepted. Um, but the longer it goes on, the more cumbersome it's going to be as things change hands so i think sending the letter out and putting the pipe putting the sign on the street to let them be aware of that it's going to be addressed there's no easy answer and maybe some people don't really think anything about it and others do um i i don't have a good answer for that one i would i would think that the uh People, people that, that live, live in these, these on, on these streets, streets um, should, should get, get together. together. I don't I think, think it's the town's responsibility to have a working group to take care of their problems. I think they should get together now. They may need a lawyer um, to help them solve through this problem. Uh, we can certainly offer them advice, but I don't think it's our responsibility to take hold of this problem. Uh, we're, we're being, being generous, generous enough, enough now, plowing, plowing the streets and making it safe so that our fire and our police can get in there when they need it. it. But, but I, 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 think, I, think I think they need to get together, together the group of them, and uh, get together and hire a lawyer and um, go, go after, after the developer and see, see what they can do about, about it. it. Again, just having listened to, to Jim, you know, over the years on these, they're, they're unique situations. So how to, how to bring one particular road to um, be, put it in a position to be accepted, the criteria may be different from another road. And I was just thinking if we could at least put some le effort into laying out, here's the road map to get your street, and then it's up to you guys to get it done. Um, if we're going to send the letter out, because I'm just afraid that we're going to be doing these on a one-off basis, and maybe we could just try to do it once and done, and do the work once, and, and if they follow through, they do. If they don't, they don't. Well, so maybe we should consult with Scott, definitely, and um, town council about what we can and can't say, and include that with a letter that goes out, that the road, your road is not a public road. We do plow it. We do not maintain the road surface. This may or may not be of a concern to you. If it's a concern, we encourage you to check with a lawyer. And if necessary, our DPW director will tell you the condition he thinks your road is in and what it would need to be repaired so it could be accepted. And then your lawyer will tell you the legal steps of getting it accepted. Yeah, we definitely want to review this. Yeah. Well, not the cost, but just here's a problem, there's a problem, you need to get an estimate. You know, this sewer has sunk, or this whatever, there's a big crack in it, there's yeah, a hole I over there. Yeah, just of just the number of projects he's got going, I just want to say it wouldn't be an immediate thing. No. So, so, where do we want to go from here? Do we want to? I think Scott wants to say something. All right, Scott. <laughs> I have a question. Um, 
So, who's responsible for any property damage, say, on an unaccepted road? We, we, we're in there plowing and, say, frost gets in a manhole cover and we hit it with a, a big plow and it, it gets broken off the frame or whatever happens. Are we responsible on making a repair to that? that That's a good question, and I it, think that... Uh, Town Council will have to chime in on that. Yeah, one but you well. understand yeah. what I'm saying, yeah. though. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you 100. And this is your purpose of getting them all accepted soon, <laughs> so that that yeah, doesn't again, happen. Again, just lay yeah. lay out exactly what it is, because that has been the concern that over the years there could be some liability that inures to the town, because in practice we've been plowing. You know, something happens. Again, they're they're just not clean and easy. Right, and and sadly. The, the roads that should have been accepted however many years ago, they're, they're going to deteriorate no matter who owns them. And if the town is responsible for dealing with it, then it's, it's cut and dry. But if it's not, then, you know, if I, again, I'm living on my street assuming that it's a town road, and then somebody tells me, oh, guess what, the catch basin just sunk, and everybody on the street's now responsible to pay you know, a portion of the $10,000 bill, it's going to be to, to fix it. And I'm going to say, what do you mean? I've been here 18 years. I've been paying taxes every year. How am I different than Jane who lives on an accepted street that's twice as old and needs more repairs, but she doesn't have to pay because it's a town road. So that's my big concern <coughs> on this whole thing. Don't, don't forget to uh, an ex unaccepted road. We're not getting chapter 90 funds either that, on yeah, that I, I You know, know we that. use basically to you know Keep our roads in the shape they are so every road not accepted we're plowing or whatever Yeah, people are paying taxes. But we're not getting our state money on that either It's almost like sewer versus non-sewer people different set of costs All right so we'll work on doing something with this. We don't need a vote for anything. All right. All right. That's on. Moving on. 5.1. Select board Thank you, Jim. schedule and goals. Our meetings are scheduled for the first and the third Wednesday of every month except town meeting. Let me just check. Are we still Okay, so um, our schedule through the end of this fiscal year is the first and third Wednesdays. Joyce, are you available to uh, run the meeting March 1st? I'm out of town. Yes. 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 Select board will discuss ups, uh, the goals for their new year. So does anybody have anything they want to uh, put in as a priority of things the town should be focused on? Just the next agenda item. <coughs> uh, yeah, I had um, I mentioned before about uh, communication, just, you know, in general, and, you know, maybe this is something that we could work, obviously, with Carolyn on, um, but, uh, I mean, there's so many different ways that we communicate with each other, um, you know, with various constituencies in town with um, board to board, you know. Um, so I, I would love to maybe spend some time thinking about what we can do to, um, I, I mean, I can't, every single week I get somebody calls trying to find something on the town website. The good news is more often than not, it's actually there. <laughs> but you know, darned if they can find it. So, you know, that's something, and, and I'm thinking about use of it interns, um, you know, with the university, something like that, that uh, 
you know, so the website's one form of communication, um, social media, we've talked about that, but even just simple things like, you know, Carolyn's now giving us that, the nice um, administrator report, you know, keeping that going, maybe putting that out. Um, we used to post that publicly on the website, so if somebody wanted to access it, they could. Um, and then we've, we've moved away from joint board meetings. Um, we don't have them nearly as often as we used to. I think that they, they were useful as long as there was an actual reason to have them, <laughs> um, not just having them to, for the sake of it. But uh, you know, as we talk about things like housing, I think it's going to be worth having at least a couple of joint meetings with the planning board. Um, so the select board and the planning board have some alignment. There are, you know, a number of ways to improve communication. So right. I would like to see that be a goal. Okay. Um, I think if we're going to have goals, they should be something that is actually measurable. So, and I don't think we're going to come to final conclusion tonight, but I think if, if you can take that and make it into specific parts of it, not just one communication, mm -hmm. but work on you know, how works, how putting things on the website, what's going on with <coughs> interactions between departments. And for the rest of it, because I mean, again, that's right. the world according to me. But, right. You know, I want to make sure the rest of the select board is on, yeah. on board. Okay. Anything else on your list? I've always done things. Um, you know, housing, again, I, I think collaboratively we've got the now that we have the housing production plan in place, um, the housing and economic development committee will, will gear back up again. Uh, and again, this is kind of the go-between for the planning board and the select board. Um, the age dementia group, the housing elements in that plan. So um, trying to pull those things together and come up with some concrete action steps around that uh, in a collaborative way would be good. Uh, Always looking for ways to enhance revenue, which could go hand in hand with that. I think, I think we need to take a look. I think we need to take a look at the um, committees that we put together. Um, it's one thing for them to be a working committee, but they are not committees to spend money uh, without our acknowledgement of it. Uh, not, not to, to uh, uh, I think they're supposed to be bringing things back to us before they implement. Um, um, I would just like to have a redirection and for us to take a look at what we actually expect our committees to do um, and, and not give them carte blanche, more or less. So I think that they need to be accountable to us before anything um, gets done. I, 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 I think we're, we're missing, missing a, a, a few pieces, pieces in a few different areas. Perfect. Well, that's the subcommittees. Well, that's the subcommittees and having them, having us, or having them report to us or whatever. And I see where you're going, but that's that's my thought on that. But that we should have, that should be a goal of ours is to, to do that. No. no. Anything on your thoughts? No, I think I think Molly and I had the very similar one um, with the communication and and um, being a presence. And I think you know there is a Hadley community Facebook page, and I think that that's been um, you know extremely informative. And I think a lot of people um, that do have Facebook have found it very useful. Um, and Alex has done a fantastic job so far in all the coverage that he's been doing for the town um, and updates and being, you know, active in that as well. So that's something that was really big for me that um, already kind of is pretty much done. Good. So. Well, then we have to find something else that we can do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I still agree that the, the website's kind of um, not as user friendly as I would like to see it. Um, okay. Randy? So I, I said that the, the next uh, agenda item is my current uh, goal to get the, the entertainment licenses all in order in terms of 
who needs to go before which board or commission before they can get their final permits to, to operate. Okay. So a couple of things that I would like to see happen, and most of these are on Carolyn's list already. Um, one is to get the classification update done for town employees. Um, I also think that we should figure out the scenarios for the Russell School after town meeting. What does the select board want to do if town meeting says no? or if they say yes. So I think that needs to be a discussion item. And that really is, once we've heard from the meeting, mm -hmm. we will have some input about what's gonna happen. Yeah. So, but we need to know in advance how we're gonna react instead of waiting till it happens and then start then. Okay, anything else? Um, how about the, um, we haven't for a number of years which I did, I did many, many, uh, many, many years ago, ago was the uh, town, town handbook. Uh, we, we haven't really updated, updated that, that recently, have, have we, Carolyn? Carolyn? What is the town handbook? Um, um, em employee handbook. handbook. That, has, that has been in process. Um, it, has, it started about a year ago, well, maybe a little over a year ago, with Deb Ratway. didn't get as far as we wanted to go, and, and, I, and I do apologize, we had, had, I just haven't had time to work on that. It did get, uh, we brought it back up, Jennifer and I, Travato and I, um, brought it back up to our priority list, and we've begun working on it. So it's, it really, right now, is just some minor changes with, with just some editing and some grammatical changes, uh, but it also, uh, what has to happen next, because there's two uh, unions forming. We can't put any any of the municipal. I'm sorry, the budget. Anything that's budgetary impacted or um, would be a part of negotiations. The um, town council's advice is not to make any changes in that part of it. But they would also, um, after we do some of the editing, that would then go to uh, town labor town council to review and make sure all of the policies are in there. All of the um, Anything that's all of the legal aspects need to be in that as well. Okay, thank you. There's my update. It's a good start. You keep us busy for a few days. All right, let's move on to Randy's favorite thing here entertainment licenses. Want to speak to that, Randy? Well, I think we all know what the issues are here, that we've got various businesses coming to Jennifer looking for a permit to open whatever their business is, and they assume that if they've got an entertainment license or whatever license they apply for, that they are qualified to do anything and everything that they feel their business needs to do. And we found last year that we have things, businesses operating in residential zones that shouldn't be, and they've got a permit from the Board of Health, which they think is enough to allow them to do whatever else, again, they think they, need, they should be able to do. So my thought is we have some kind of a checklist, if you will, that says if you're coming in for this type of permit for whatever your business is, you need to go see the building inspector, the planning board, the board of health, the whoever, the whoever, and have a, you know check boxes. Do you need if they come to see Jennifer for a permit or a license, and she knows that they need to go see X, Y, and Z, that she tells them that, and that there's. A, a trail that they have to create and follow and that we we Jennifer knows that they've done all their due diligence and then when the the uh, permit comes before the select board we know that all the boxes have been checked appropriately and we can uh, feel good about uh, granting the license or permit 
So that's on the farm now, Randy, mm -hmm. except for the Board of Health. It doesn't seem like it's getting... Well, it seems like it's inconsistent, that's the issue, right? Um, so it is on there for an entertainment license. It goes to fire planning and the police chief, and they all see almost every license is issued by the select board. It has reviews on there. Um, and it actually says that on the front of the town website where um, I did link for y'all to see that. It, it is on there that they, they review them and approve them. Um, in reference to the places that have recently come forth for entertainment licenses, um, both of those places were already holding events with no licensing at all. And I only failed them because people brought them to me mm -hmm. or because I happened to see them on Facebook. And so, um, and as I understand, someone else brought one in particular to me and sent that individual to me for a license. They had already been approved for a food truck. And as I understood, um, it was agricultural. And so as I understood that they were within the rights to apply for their their license. And um, then when it was brought to my attention by um, the other three people who I mentioned to approve them, they had already been approved for everything else. And so we all as a group made a decision to move forward for the year to bring this up to readdress it. So this is not, um, it's, it's not that I'm not following the correct steps or that the, the correct steps aren't happening. It's that these were things that were already taking place and we were trying to make sure people were informed about them. And that the people who knew that they were happening, so that the town departments knew that they were happening. So I, I don't I don't know that I'm, if I'm missing a step and, and I need to know that step, I mean, I'm happy to. I'm not suggesting you're doing anything wrong, Jennifer. But what My big concern was last year we had the food truck down at the silos. Correct. And they went to the Board of Health and got a permit from the Board of Health and they thought they were good to go. So that's my concern, stuff so like that. We need to bring Board of Health on board. So more. you want me to add them as to one of the sign-offs for entertainment life? I think that would make sense, yeah. And again, there's stuff that we're not necessarily going to know about, like that, for instance. If the Board of Health signs off on it, and maybe we need to talk with them so that they understand that if somebody comes before them looking for a permit, that they have the wherewithal to say, we can grant you from our perspective, but you've got these other places to go to to get their permission from. So I would say that with the new health inspector, Ben, mm -hmm. he is much more um, informed and prepared to assist places opening and getting food permits for their trucks, whereas before um, there were three relatively new Board of Health members mm -hmm. and an administrative assistant who perhaps did not understand all the regulations behind issuing a food permit and did not understand that there were other steps to it. And at that time, also no one from the Board of Health was attending the project coordination meeting that we have on Tuesdays mm -hmm. where we bring these things up. And so as, as a group of people who license and inspect and everything, we were all a bit blindsided by the fact that they had approved a food truck for the entire summer. No one was prepared for that. I think almost part of this problem with um, departments approving things <clears throat> out, a lot of it was happening with the Board of Health. I think that the steps of hiring Ben um, are really going to eliminate a lot of those. Um, as to the zoning, um, for where things are allowed for residential or agricultural or things like that. Um, if I need to start a procedure, I, so Tommy, please correct me if I'm wrong, you're the zoning enforcement officer. So if there's a zoning problem, you would be the one that would, or do I need to take that to the planning board? I, I just want to understand. Or the ZBA if it's out of a, if it's a non-allowed zone, but that takes time. I think start with Tommy. He should be able to help you. So can I 
First meeting on February 24th. And it's on <laughs> I was just gonna it's say that. It's yeah. going to be, yeah. <laughs> you should really kind of like beef this up on the website. Beef, beef website. it up on the website because it's just it it it's good, but I think there's a lot of opportunity there because um, it doesn't really specify who needs so it. So one of the issues that I was hearing last year was we have businesses. All businesses are currently feeling the pinch of inflation and lack of business because of COVID. And so we have businesses who are not in a business district who want to do what businesses who are in business district are allowed to do, such as entertainment. And I'm wondering if the select board needs to look at that somehow as an overview and say, we want to support our businesses, we want to help them, how can we get around this or get you know get them through this well i think like carolyn said you know but are they let, the, let the issues get fleshed out and and be brought to us rather than than us as a board speculating about that based on what's happened in the past you know? you'd be surprised when i read mean, things i heard today that i would never have thought of so i think we need to hear it from them and then work with what they provide for us. Jane Deedee's never handled. Yes. We deal a lot with the planning board, and actually we've been discussing lately that we, um, I believe uh, the planning board, Jim, you guys have made an acknowledgement at the end of Yes. Yeah, so what happens is a lot of times businesses would come in because, of course, we would direct them to the planning board. But they make sure that they tell them that they approve on their part, but that doesn't always necessarily mean that it'll get approved on the way down to, say, the building department or so um, because of other different either zoning or things like that. So um, unfortunately, every business is different. So that's why we've been also trying to work out a plan to make sure, and they're, they're trying to make sure that they, everybody that they approve, that they say it's approval upon the okay of the building department or whichever other department that they need to go to. So you all have a list, if I remember correctly, of all the departments you want to see checked off before you actually issue a building permit that you know. yes uh, Tommy had been starting to work on that I think that's the kind of thing and I think rather than saying I think saying here is what you need to do it may not apply but it might check all of these boxes right 
Correct. And I, again, I think saying it and you're busy and you're you're the person applying and it's all new and you don't know who's speaking and you forget you for, we forgot you're supposed to see the board of health you forgot you were supposed to see whoever right so if it's written down and you can go and they can say no this is not applicable for your permit or yes we need to do that it gives them a bit of a guidance right and unfortunately what happened is because we didn't really have anybody um, with the board of health that understood how the process really went unfortunately when they did issue the permit for the food truck they didn't say but make sure you need to go see this one or that one or so on and that's where as randy said it got kind of lost in the shuffle and you know jennifer didn't know you know so that's what we're kind of trying to right and i that, i think that's important yeah i'm certainly not suggesting that anybody in town is doing something wrong no. I'm just saying that the applicants don't understand the process and they make assumptions and we need to help them lessen their assumptions. And in, in, in every, like we said, every case is going to be different. So that's why even though we have the checklist, um, that's why we're all trying to, when I get a call, I now try to say, yes, you do have to go through the planning board, but depending on what they say and other conditions of what you're planning on doing, because that's the problem too. We not, don't always know exactly everything that they're planning on doing. So it is a little bit of a process, but we're trying to work with the people on that. So these things are a priority with the bylaw committee right now and the planning board's also working on it. So it's not gonna be ready for this year, but food trucks, entertainment, and things like that are a priority that we are working on. But unfortunately for this season, it's not ready. Bill? Yeah, yeah uh, I, I just, just wanted to mention we are also working, working on a permitting guide with our Pioneer Valley, Valley Planning, Planning Commission consultant, and uh, uh, that'll be something that can be adopted administratively. administratively. So, so uh, that will be in the works. works. It, it is in the works. works. It should be out soon. soon. What dates are they looking at? Looking, this is an annual license for the Okay. So, um, so that is something mm -hmm. I have not brought forward because, based off of this request to have it on here, I knew the select board was not ready to take those up at this time. But I am holding those. I don't believe either of the businesses are looking to hold events right now. So it is something we can hold off on a little bit longer. Um, but why would we hold on them though? Because they are not in locations where typically an entertainment license would be permitted, but since they have been done um, having events there, we, for the season last year, mm -hmm. allowed it, and now they've come back wanting it again. Again, yeah. Basically, they want to, you know, they're working, they want to go to the uh, planning board, like to come in front of them before, okay. now before it um, comes back to the board. But it's places where you want to seem to do great, you know, and have it once or twice a year, but not. The complaints I've been getting is it's three days a week, right. all season, yep. and it's not zoned for it. Mm -hmm. And it's just not fair that some, you know, it could get out of control if everybody's allowed to do it. That's right. the only issue until we get a, you know, so, bylaw and straighten it out. Okay. So back to Jennifer's question, when will we be able to answer these permit requests? <laughs> Next. Don't go too far, Tom. This is turning into quite a deal. Um, the, the we want to we want to amend the zoning bylaws to address entertainment license. That's not going to happen until the annual town meeting. I don't want to put those people off to that lawn because by the time it's adopted, they said it, it's a disaster. They're into their system. They're, I mean, they're into their entertainment season. They want to address. For the time being, I would suggest or tell them that they need to come to the planning board for an informal site plan approval. Now, we're not going to go through the process of, you know, the whole notification, everything else, but at least we can look at what they want to do 
and address the parking, the traffic issues, and stuff like that on an informal basis to say you're okay. I know one of the people, one of the, I believe it's one of the companies is coming to you. If they haven't, they're going to be coming to you. And they don't have adequate parking for what they want to do. I have no idea how they're going to address that because they had something going on last year where the cars were parked half a mile away on town roads. And if they want to do something similar this year in a different theme, for lack of a better term, where, where are they going to put the vehicles? Because they only have room for a small number on their property, and if they have, if they exceed that, th that's what we want to look at. We, we, we want to make sure that whatever they, we're not trying to be anti-business, but we also don't want to clog up town roads. Okay. So. I'm wondering if there's a way that, while this is in process, we can do like monthly approvals or something until we get a final thing. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I, you you kind of don't want to give some of the, it would probably put the appropriate or the applying businesses at a, at a extreme inconvenience without knowing they're going to be able to do this for the summer because sometimes it takes a few months to line up their entertainment that they want to do. So, I mean. So assume I, they're doing that now and then we say, no, this isn't going to work. They should, I mean. If, if, if they apply now and they tell them it's not going to work, you're going to have to find an alternate means. Uh, yeah, we're not against somebody that wants to do the once a year thing. I'm going to use this. A place in Sutherland has, an, has a fall festival. They have hundreds of cars, but they have parking on their property. They pack the roads for the day. There's a lot of traffic on Route 47, but it's a one-day thing. And, okay, you probably can deal with a one-day thing once a year. But a one-day thing once a week, that's a different story. That's what we don't want to see. That's what we want to try to address. Um, you know, like I said, we're not against any, anybody, especially a farmer, trying to make money. God bless them. We want them to make money. We want the open space and all these other things. But we don't want to convenient, I mean, inconvenience a whole bunch of the town for the sake of one or two businesses. We've got, to, we've got to find a balancing act. So perhaps when we issue alcohol licenses, we don't do it as for the year you can have an alcohol license for the top of the campus. You do it for these dates. And perhaps enter, no, we do it for the whole year? Top of the campus is, we do it don't, 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 let's not use top of campus. All right, anywhere, somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere wants an alcohol license for one day. Okay. And then they want it again a month later. Okay. and a month later, and they have specific dates. Okay. If we were asking the entertainment people to give us specific dates that would answer the question of is this weekly or annually or monthly and give us a better handle on what kind of thing to expect. So MTL chapter, oh, can I do it? 138 section, 121 section 138 is for an annual entertainment license, and that is what is under the select board's purview, and that is license you issue is for an annual license. You do also do a Sunday license, but again, that's for all the Sundays of a year. We do, do, you do not issue a monthly, weekly, or daily entertainment license. Okay, that's um, good to know. So, um, I will say that I will suggest I will. I would like. I would like actually clarification from the board. If you want me to send the people that have applied for the entertainment license to the planning board, I would like your direction on that. And I would also like to point out that one of the individuals has already gone, sort of come here, and I believe they've come to you as well last season. And am I redirecting them to come back again? What date? What we were informed last year on that one individual and what actually occurred don't exactly match a hundred percent. So yes. So then I would like the select board to direct me officially that that is the yes. process that y'all yes, would like Yes, we would like to see them and they should see planning board. Before they come to y'all? Yes. yes. Can y'all, should that be a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call vote, please. Thank you, Keegan Chungalo. Yes. I'm sorry, Keegan? Yep. Chungalo?
Yes. 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 Parsons. Yes. Isaac. Yes. Thank you. Thank I will you. inform them that they need to come to the plate next month. Perfect. Thank you. Do they Thank need you. to be on your agenda or can they come to the plate? No, they, this is in, informal. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will inform both of the licensee applications that that's their next step. Thank you. All right. Are we ready to move yeah, on? I think I can sleep tonight. Okay. Good. All right. Linda. <laughs> Good night, Jim. <laughs> Leaving so soon? <laughs> so I know these uh, reports are in board docs, but I did want to give you hard copies because I we had talked about um, reaching a point where the budget book that we prepare each year is one that we can keep updated with important documents as we go. So here's your first set. I, if I'd thought of it, I would have done a three-hole punch. So, But I think these are uh, reports that's important for you to have current. And um, is it on board, not board docs, Jennifer? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to start with the, uh, the general funds. I don't know how big it is for people. I was pretty tiny. I can, I can zoom mine. Yay. Yay. A long, long time. <laughs> well, when it quits spinning, I'll be happy to show it to you. Okay. Well, why don't I just uh, start talking about it? Um, just uh, to give some background so that people who are seeing it for the first under uh, time understand what it is that we have. These are quarterly reports. The town passes two budgets each year, one for the general fund and one for the enterprise fund. And there are three enterprise funds, Water, Sewer, and Hadley Media. So this is a report on each of those budgets as to where we stand um, uh, each quarter. And um, this particular one, being the second quarter, is now halfway through the year. So it gives us a really good, it's a good landmark for us to use, especially as we're wrapping up the budget to see where do we stand with last year's projections and last year's budgets, um, I mean revenue projections and, and where our budgets stand right now. So how does that set us up? Are we in good shape for making the same kinds of assumptions as we're going into planning the FY24 budget? So um, the column, which is this year, are, everything in green is this year. And all of the, uh, the, then we have 22 and 21 next to it in white and pink. And they're all set up the same way. So if we follow FY23, we've got three general categories of revenue. The first column being real estate and, and personal property taxes, second being local receipts, and then net state aid. And they're totaled as, um, in the next column as total year-to-date revenues. Um, for each of those columns, we have in the real estate one, um, when you follow down a couple of lines, it shows the year-to-date actuals for the real estate taxes and, and personal property taxes at this point are uh, at a 46.26% of what we projected to receive for FY23's budget. Uh, for local, uh, and that is um, uh, let me see how I should do this. So when we compare that, if you're wondering why aren't we at 50%, and I think in both the revenues and the uh, budget areas, you're going to see we're not, we don't receive money or spend money exactly one twelfth a month or 25% uh, each quarter. So in order to judge whether that 46% is good or any of these percentages are good, we actually compare them to where we were at this same point in the prior two years. So we compare that 46.26% to last year. At this point, we had, compared, we had collected 46.61% in um, taxes. So that's really pretty much spot on for where we have been. The year before, it was at 50%. Um, there's, there's various reasons. I don't think that's a critical uh, difference, but being slightly under is fine because uh, by the end of the year, we were nearly 100%. So um, the money comes in all year long. 
Our second column for local receipts, we are right now at 51.44 percent. That's over half of what we expect to collect in local receipts for the entire year. Um, how does that compare to the year before? Much higher. Um, we're at 51.44 percent last year at this point. Um, in we were at 43.46 percent, and the year before at 31 percent. And remember, that was a year where we were still starting climbing out of our, our COVID year. So we are, um, we are where we were last year with a bit of a cushion, too. And there are some pretty large amounts that we still have not collected. So I think that's a very believable number that we are a bit ahead in the local receipts. State aid, there's nothing we really can do about state aid except um, say thank you and collect it. Um, we're at 52 percent of what was projected. That's, that may mean that we are going to be receiving a bit more in the year than we had initially expected. Last year we were just under 50 percent at 49.47. The year before we were also uh, we were just over 50 percent as well. So it may mean that the states distribute them a little bit on the uh, front front loading the distributions, or it may mean that we are going to collect more in that area, and we'll keep an eye on it. So for total revenues, we're at 47.55 percent, a great place to be at halfway through the year. Last year, we were um, 46 percent, so we're slightly higher than that. The year before, we were also uh, we were 46.91 uh, percent, so we're pretty consistent, and we're amazingly consistent. I'm really surprised about this. So what it tells us for going into the budget season is that we can uh, as we're look, making our projections for 24, that we're, we're using the right methodology. We're doing okay. We're collecting what we expected this year. We're going to make these same kinds of projections going into 24. So, um, and then the last column in green are the year-to-date expenses. That's how much has been spent in the budgets that were approved. So at halfway through the year, um, we are at almost, uh, we are at 48.41% which is under half of the amount that was budgeted. Uh, compared to the prior years, we were at 44.97 and 46.24. So we're slightly ahead of that. The question was asked yesterday, is that significant? I don't think at this point it is. I think that people more, um, I, I don't know. We're just, we're spending our money as appropriated, uh, not overspending it. Um, there may have been some holding back in, in earlier years. Uh, to see where we went, maybe there's more confidence in it, but we'll keep a, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, a two percent difference isn't all that significant, you know. In looking at maybe one to two hundred thousand um, dollars across a twenty-two million dollar budget, I, I don't think that says a whole lot. But we will certainly keep an eye on it. So uh, the other uh, the other thing to call your attention to in the general funds chart is down at the bottom. There's a repeat of what we just went through, what the percentages of each of these areas were. But the last item um, is the free cash. And this will always, I'll always have this reported on the quarterly report. So if you're ever asked or ever need to know, you can go right back to this. Um, we were certified at 1.751 million in general funds uh, at the end of June 22. We then went to town meeting and spent some of the money. So our free cash balance after special town meeting was $1.468 million. That will stay at this number until we spend money at annual town meeting. And then we get recertified June 30th at the end of this fiscal year. This is not a number that goes up and down all year. There's only, we get certified, we spend it at town meetings, and then it gets recertified the next year. That's the only thing that happens to free cash. And that's true of the reserves in water and, in water and sewer as well. So um, we are ahead of the game going into the 24 budget. This is a year that we ha are needing to wean ourselves entirely off of the ARPA replacement revenues. And our initial way of doing that will be to use this free cash to so that we have the same amount in free cash as we had last year in free cash and the ARPA. And then hopefully we'll be able to go down from there, um, go down as in usage of free cash from year to year, which is where we want to go. Uh, we don't want to do it too drastically because we're really just trying to get up to speed. Again, our, our budgets as well as our revenues are just coming out of COVID and we've got some catch up in, in those areas to do too. So that's it for the general fund. Should, any questions or I move on?
moving on. Okay, so the next one is water. Set up exactly the same way. Um, fewer revenue categories in water and sewer. That means it makes the numbers bigger, a little easier to re uh, read, I guess. Um, for water revenues, we are, uh, year-to-date actuals is 58.38%. Higher than last year, which was 51.98%, about 7% higher than last year, but not quite as high as we were the year before. Water usage varies and payment varies. The rates do not vary. So we will be coming to you um, in a bit. That's just a preview of things to come. This is something that has, has to be handled. So this is completely on usage and on payments, whether our, um, how our water and sewer payments fluctuate. And what is the other revenue? How do we... I, I didn't hear. What is the other revenue listed? Uh, the, the first one is usage, and the other, uh, other revenue are... Oh, some of the other the, the categories that Scott was uh, talking about, too, in the, in the fees that people pay for the various services. Thank you. Am I missing something else, Scott? Is that... Licenses, fees, permits... But the, use, the first category is completely usage. Um, okay, the expenditures, 45.36% uh, we're at, just uh, a little higher than last year, but very comparable to the year before. So we're doing okay there. Two, the water, uh, um, I think that's about it to say on water. It's uh, just a single budget. Um, uh, so the the reserves for water, we were certified at $1.2 million, a bit over that, on June 30th, 22. Spent some money at Fall Town Meeting, and now we are standing at $1.133 million reserves for water. If you go back up to our block, which uh, the green block, which shows use of reserves, you see we have a budget there of one million three hundred fifty one thousand with water revenues being one two ninety three five twenty therefore we are uh, we build in a certain amount of rev, uh, water reserves to be used to spend on the budget each year we did last year as well and uh, we are looking to do that again this year this generally continues to eat away at those reserves um, the reserves were initially set up as the excess of revenues over the budget and intended to be used on capital and other needs in the water area. So we are not at a point now, and we haven't been for a couple of years, where the receipts being collected for water usage are covering the budget. And you'll be hearing uh, the next page. Um, oh, anything? Any questions on water? Um, the next chart then is sewer. Um, let's see. So with the revenues in sewer, we're at 45.15%. That's a little bit lower in collections uh, in receipts than uh, projected receipts than the year before, which is a little bit lower than the year before that. Um, for expenditures, we pretty consistently spend about a third of the sewer budget in the first half of the year. I don't know why, but we consistently do that. We're pretty comparable to the other years, kind of somewhere in between 22 and 21. So you see uh, in sewer budget there, the little calculations in the, in the green, smaller green box that we build in a certain amount of sewer reserves to be used for the budget each year because our, we're just budgeting higher than we have uh, in receipts. Um, we're working, we're using a higher amount of reserves for the budget in sewer than in water, and we're starting with a lower amount of reserves to pull from. For, so this is the one that is in more critical condition. Again, we'll be hearing more from us on this. But the free cash certified was 350900 at the end of FY22. Again, there was some spending in the fall, including um, putting more money in to support the budget at that time. 
We are left with 255,000 right now after town meeting, and you can see we're already pl um, we're planning on we're going to definitely be planning on using it for the 24 budget. One thing you can count on each year with budgets is they will increase, um, and we can count on a certain amount of increase in our general fund budget. But our increases in the sewer and the water are tied to only two things, usage, and there's only so much usage you can expect, and rates. And that is the one, the one area that we can uh, control, and there has been not a lot of increase in the rates in either of these areas in the last few years. Some of it was um, trying to hold even, again, during the COVID years, just get, just putting off increases for a couple of years. But this is something that we're going to be looking to address this spring. And the last one, I don't usually do Hadley Media during the year, but I think it was important this year because they are also starting to trend towards a higher, uh, higher budgets. And they're well covered by the revenues, uh, not revenues, um, they're well covered by the reserves at this point, and they had a high level of reserves considering the size of the budget, but it is also going in that direction. Um, I would, uh, so at, at, um, at the halfway point, you'll see there is no revenue, we just, the only revenue we get in this budget is that single payment we receive at the end of the year for the, uh, for the fees that we received from charter. We got almost 70, almost 71,000 a year before last year, almost 73,000 the year before. So we're actually making less each year because of, again, this comes down to usage and the number of users of cable. And uh, even though they may increase the rates, we are just not getting, uh, we're just not going in that direction. At the same time, as with any budget, it is increasing for Hadley Media. So we're building, uh, we're starting to build in. If you look back in the, in the pink one for FY21, we didn't use any reserves to, to balance the budget. We used some in reserves for 22. We used, uh, we used more, almost 30,000 to balance it this year because you see those revenues, they just stay at that 70, 71, 72, 73. They stay right there. And the, the budget goes from 71 to 75 to uh, 100. So um, if you want to have it staffed and we want to have all of the, the games and meetings and all the coverage that we do have and with the kind of equipment and um, our little spinning owls and other things that, that make this a sh something that people can watch at home and participate in, um, we need to support the budget and look to see how this is going to go going forward. The reserves uh, that were almost 200,000 at this point are down to 165. Um, at 30,000 this year, that's going to just pull into the reserves again, and it'll pull in. We know for sure it's going to pull in more for 24. So over the, you know, this is just a, a cliff we're going to come off. There's no replenishing it. Although with a new contract, we may get another influx of money. So this is something we have to watch really closely consider the value of this service and whether at some point we need to supplement it from some other direction. So I think that's, uh, that's an area, again, to keep an eye on and, and start to make some plans. So that is where we stand with revenues and expenditures. Thank you for an easily understood document. Good. And explanation. Okay, yes. good. good. And color. And color. <laughs> I know you have to leave yeah. your office to get it, but it's worth it. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, maybe this year I'll print color in my own office, but right now it uh, gives me extra steps to go and pick it up from the select board's office, so I don't mind. Um, so I don't really have uh, fun facts like I did last time, but I do have a couple of things I want to just give a very, very brief update on, because I know you've got a busy night. Um, I want to say we are working on the budget, and we're... Uh, the, the goal is to have that something and, and the new budget book out in, really in the next couple of weeks if we can. This is the month. It's going to be out there. I know you meet in two weeks. That's that our goal still? <laughs> we'll definitely have the budget. The book might take an extra week, so we'll see. We're doing, we'll do our best um, on that. And the other thing I just wanted to give you a heads up on is uh, we are probably looking at a, a bond for, we're, yeah, most definitely, unless there's a lot of things we don't end up buying this, this year by June 30th. But you know we had a lot of borrowing on the fall town meeting, 
and uh, we can keep going into that short-term borrowing and use the budgets to pay it down as was presented, but we all also, as I said at that time, this is a much higher than usual amount uh, to be borrowing. And um, there are some single very large items in there, it's like half a million dollar items, um, that it would be easier on all of the budgets if we could spread those payments over more than five to ten years. My short-term borrowing is limited to five to ten years, and a bond is over a longer period of time. So we are, we're probably looking at a multi-million dollar budget up to three, I think, at this point. I've been talk I talked with David Eisenthal last week, and we're, I have another call from him. We're gonna, uh, we've already started with Bond Council, getting the ball rolling on making sure that, um, that our, our, our documentation is in place so that we can do it. So come this spring, we are going to be rolling over and doing our usual short-term ban, but we're also going to be identifying and doing a second ban, which is a ban is a bond anticipation note. Um, it's a short-term note that we renew every year. So we'll do a second one with the items that have been identifying, uh, identified as appropriate for going into a bond, and then we'll have that bond come do, I mean, that shorter-term ban, that second ban, due at a point during the year when we're ready to roll it into a bond. Um, and it will include the CPA, uh, the field project that they approved, and we'll see what happens in the spring for their other project. Um, it includes anything, it will include anything to do with property, uh, buildings, um, and the very largest trucks. Not a $100,000 truck, but we did have a $500,000 one, which has been purchased. So it would be, as you can, it'd be easier to spread that payment over 20 years than over uh, 10. So heads up, there'll be more information on that one, but... Um, there we are. All Thank set? You. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Liaison um, assignments. Um, we're looking to appoint a member of the board to serve as Hadley Media Liaison and the Climate Change Committee Liaison. Do you want to say anything about either of these? Carol? We just never have a assigned one to uh, have the media and climate change just to time constraints for Amy. It's been really difficult for her to attend. So she has graciously asked that someone else do that. So, so it's a it's a very um, it's a really robust and really active committee and um, so I, I I just didn't feel like I was doing it justice. Um, that are giving it the attention that it, it required, so. Well, and thank you for opening up so that they can get the mm -hmm. help that they need. Yeah. So is anyone interested in Climate Change Committee? Randy, do you want it? I thought you wanted it. <laughs> I have a coin I could flip it. All right, I'll go for that, Jane, flip it. Lift the curtain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know Molly does nothing but goes home and watches TV every night, so I want to All right. respond. I have a coin. Okay. Amy, you tell me. Heads, who? Um, Randy. If it's heads, it's Randy. It's heads. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. If I didn't work in a different state, it would be a little easier. Okay, um, I guess Randy, I'm if you need any help, just give me a call. Yeah. It's very interesting. It is. It's fascinating stuff. It is. I was liaison for two years with them, and they really are doing some wonderful things. Okay. I will volunteer to be Hadley Media liaison if nobody else wants to fight me for it. Okay. Easy. All right. Moving on. Subcommittee updates. Can I ask a favor? Yes. We have a couple um, department heads who would like to address the emergency declaration for the Calhoun Wales. Sure. Mm -hmm. Wales. We have Wales. Number six. <laughs> Wait, would you mind, Scott? Uh, That's fine. Come on up. Well, this was this this wasn't on the agenda. This is an emergency. Agenda. Number six. Oh, 
Huh? 6.1. 6.1, let's see. Okay, okay. yeah, Callahan, Callahan Wells, Wells. Emergency. emergency. Got, Got it. it. Thank, Thank you. you. This afternoon. All right, I did not see that. Thank you. Who would you like to start? Flip the coin. So, uh, in the Springtown meeting, uh, I came to the uh, people of Hadley and asked for an article for buying propane. But purchasing propane tanks at the Callahan well, we currently lease them and we wanted to buy them so we could uh, do some procurement on buying uh, propane to see if we could save some money. Currently, we have to buy the propane from the vendor that owns the tanks. So we started looking at this project and, uh, and of course, with our, with our luck of things around here lately, the project did not start off very well. Uh, originally we thought we could keep the tanks in the same location that they were just pour one new thing to hold it and we'll be good to go well with uh, the propane tanks and the where they are uh, the measurements from the building we cannot do that it's too close to the building so we were uh, trying to figure out plan B uh, we looked at multiple spots at the Callahan well where this could happen and we were really striking out for a spot to put these and of course in the Callahan well we're in the flood plain <coughs> and we're under a lot of re uh, regulations there from the DEP for the drinking water side of the operation so uh, we came up with an idea of in the rear of the property next to the generator to build a retaining wall and you know build a pad there to support these new propane tanks well of course in the course the time frame of looking at this the cost of things just keeps going up and going up and going up and coming up with like a game plan to do this project was very tough to find someone to help us uh randy was nice enough to volunteer his services to give us some great elevations we could try to make a plan of where we had to be height wise and etc uh so anyways we started looking at this again and we're like oh we got to figure this out do we need to come up with more money etc so we had a couple of vendors come look at this project a few times and you know just we didn't go anywhere so a couple two weeks ago uh, a vendor came back again to look at the project again and he uh, was investigating the piping if the piping could be reused that's currently in the ground going from the tanks to the building and especially to the generator it's over a hundred feet of pipe to go to the generator from the current tank and he noticed that the pipe just the way they did things back in the day wasn't protected from any corrosion so now we have a pipe down there that feeds propane to the generator that is in very poor condition and is in jeopardy of breaking and leaking so there there's a we, we need to do something on this immediately. Mike is uh, very concerned about uh, propane leakage down there. Uh, the propane generator uh, actually runs on liquid propane and not vapor. So the system's a lot different, the pressures are different, and there's a, there's a concern down there that needs to be addressed immediately. So uh, I had uh, a couple weeks, now that we were in this situation, I contacted uh, Carl's, you know, Stephen Connects need to come out and look at the job and if he could help us come up with like a game plan of a design so, so we could do this project. And he did. Uh, we have a design and we have a cost estimate from him. But 
of course, it's expensive. We have some money, not enough. Uh, but we do need to do this right away. It, it's, it's an emergency now. If that propane line breaks, we are going to have a real problem down there. So if it breaks, not only do we have an environmental problem, we have no water? Yeah. Yes, that, that, that does provi provide emergency power to the building. Uh, we could put a temporary propane tank down there to help with the situation, but it's very complicated thing to do because it would have to be anchored to the building somehow down there to for buoyancy reasons if we got a flood or whatever and it's not something i think mike is really interested in doing we want to make a real repair down there it's also that we would have to do temporary repiping of that because the piping that's there is not holding up so when scott reported it to me it's my obligation as the emergency manager to notify the chair of the select board that, in my opinion, again, this is your vote, but in my opinion, this, this, this constitutes a pretty serious risk to the community. So I did reach out to Mass Emergency Management. They are awaiting our answer on this because this will be put on their board. Uh, and they felt that this is absolutely the reason why you would use an emergency declaration like this. Um, Any sense of how long it's going to take to rectify? Uh, Carl said that they could start building the retaining wall Monday. So we can get going relatively fast. And the overall project? Uh, hopefully a few couple weeks out, but weather permitting. Uh, yeah. Look, we're getting a little bit of cold this weekend. Uh, we can protect that area from frost. But next week, again, the weather is going to be looking like it's in the 40s where they can work. Obviously, this time of year, weather is a big factor. And we've been pretty lucky so far. We really looked at different options. And when the plant was actually built, that wasn't the, it wasn't the prime location in the driveway with access for, for us. So if something happens with those tanks, they're basically blocking access to the building um, if something was to happen to those tanks. So we were looking at everything, and Scott did a lot of work with, obviously, Randy, thank you for your part, but just working with DCR, there's no flexibility, and we had actually looked at the area off of the driveway between the two buildings, and that's a no-disturb zone. There's no way we can touch any of, of that. So the only option was building this retaining wall, elevating it so that we're out of the floodplain, putting on the concrete pad and, and fastening it that way. So, uh, Back when I was originally starting this project, I went to down there with Shiloh just because of any wetland problems or et cetera. Because it is a water treatment facility, we are exempt from uh, that kind of stuff down there. And uh, we did contact the DEP on this. They are in favor of what we are proposing uh, for a repair and what, what we're doing there in favor of. And by declaring the emergency, this also um, avoids any issues in terms of spending outside of the appropriation, right? It opens up, basically, uh, you have access to all department budgets, and there's emergency procurement procedures put in place. Right. Town Council also ready. Okay. So do we need a, to make a motion then to authorize the chair to declare? Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the recommendation of our emergency management coordinator um, and uh, authorize the chair to declare a state of emergency. Second. Any seconded. Any seconds? Any other discussion? Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Keegan? Yes. Oh, Joyce is saying something that she's muted. You're muted, Joyce. She's still muted. Still talking. Unmute. Um, um, there, was there was just one thing, thing to add to that. Uh, were, we were we supposed to add also to make funds available for necessary repairs? Okay. Part of the declaration is not. Yes. Correct. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Parsons? Yes. And Iser. Yes. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. All right. Subcommittee updates. So I think my own sense of this committee list is that we should take it and review it and see in the back of our mind if there's anything else that we know exists that we haven't put on here and then come back with it in two weeks. And so we're basically, this is a homework assignment. I did list the two that are the Disability Commission and the Howard Media uh, Advisory Committee are both completely vacant. There are no members at all of either of those, but y'all have not disbanded them. Okay. I also know immediately we haven't disbanded the Senior Center Building Committee. That was till term and completion of the project. We have a roof going on. Solar. It's still in. I'm sorry, I was under the understanding that the the building senior center building committee was no longer meeting and active. We're not meeting unless we need to. I will add them right now. Thank you. You got it. And the other building committees, I am correct, they are complete. I don't I can't speak to the Joyce, can you speak to the fire station building committee? Are you? We are not done. I'm, I'm no. updating this in live time. And the library committee, Molly? We're done. The library is done. Okay. Okay. Um. All right, so we will continue looking at this and talk about it next week because we still have executive session to do. Mm -hmm. All right. And Jane, when we are we going to also do a run through just to make sure these committees are all continue to be relevant and there's some right. That's what our conversation is yeah. going to be in two weeks. Okay. Are you are you wanting to bring these committees? No. No. We just want to discuss them. We're just going to discuss them in two weeks. So that's all right. Uh, town administrator's report. Well, I know you guys are talking, so I'm. I, I just want to let you know that we are doing a lot, a lot of focus on the levy. Um, actually, this week, uh, Scott and I are meeting with Rich Niles, the engineer. Rich Niles is meeting with the climate change committee. They, they want to hear more about This very week or next week? Yeah, next week. Thank you. And then we are meeting with the Silver Jacket uh, for the Silver Jacket uh, Blood Risk Outreach Program. So we have many members who are going to be taking a tour of the right community. Several organizations, um, the Army Corps, uh, the NEMA, FEMA, everybody. It's a, it's a pretty big group. So it's, it was, we're very excited about it. This is going to be great to educate everybody. Because that is, it is one of the, if we talk about communications, it is one of the biggest concerns as well as climate change. They, do they just, unless they're watching these movies, these movies, they're not going to be happening. We just want people to know that we are working, and this week specifically doing a lot of is it worth inviting Harry to this? No, it's really, it's, it's, it's there will be definitely opportunities for um, everyone to be a part of this. There's a lot of outreach involved in education. This is just getting everybody who's involved, and it's a large group, to get a visual view of it. So they're not going to be talking about anything. They're just going to be, just, they need that tool. They need that visual. Okay. So I just want to let you know about that. Um, I do want to let, I know um, one of you had asked about the compensation study. That is, we've got the scope of work. We'll be doing that, and then I'll get the uh, contract to sign. So that's ready to move forward. Um, and then uh, our, the audit that I wanted to do for all of the copy machines and printers, uh, Peter Gore works, works a few hours for um, our office. He's, gonna, he's taken that on. He has sent information out to all the boards and committees just to get an inventory. And that we do have um, a vendor coming in to help us with that audit to just see what equipment we have. And then we'll put some documents together to go out for a minute to see, what, see if we can be some cost savings. I think we will be. We're buying toner at significant amounts of money. And it's, it, we won't know until we do it, but right. I think we need to do it. Um, and I, that, that's, I'm not going to go into other. That's it for now. Okay. Uh, select board members' items for future discussion. Anything you need on next agenda? Anything you would like on the next agenda? Um, I have been approached by um, 
some town individuals are still questioning the Ukraine flag. I don't know if that's something that they need to bring up or how people go about that again. Um, I don't know. Um, I know the town voted for it. I don't know. Question if there's some people well, it wasn't the town, it was just the select board right? yeah. voted to yeah, fly the Ukrainian flag. Mm -hmm. And Amy has had several residents had, question Yeah, some that. residents asking about it still being there, um, you know, questioning the appropriateness of it there, um, being offended that it was um, just the Ukraine flag and not in other wars Thank that you. are going on and stuff. Because you just reminded me that yeah. at the Mass Municipal Conference, um, so I, I did have an item, but I totally spaced out. Um, and there was a strong recommendation coming out of the MMA conference that if the town didn't have a flagpole policy, and I know this is slightly different because it's, it's you know, um, displayed on the, the railing, Mm -hmm. but specifically a flag policy. Mm -hmm. um, they went through a whole case study of what happened in Boston um, that went all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And you can only imagine the money that got spent going to the Supreme Court on a case. Um, but they gave a couple of examples of a very, you know, simple policy that the select board may want to consider to, again, have a policy so that you know, we can avoid some potentially sticky situations down the road. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe that could come up also in the context of, of that. Like, there does seem like there should be a, a time frame or... Yeah, you know, yeah for how long it flies. Yeah, how, yes. long, how long do we do something right. like that? Right, and just the propriety of yeah. all of that. So, so is that something we could... Sure, put? we can put that on the agenda. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. think, I think that would be... Um, a good idea. Yeah, and there were a couple of So we're going to call it flag display so that we cover both the railing and the flag. Yeah, pole. exactly. Yeah. Actually, Actually it should be a policy, policy because, because it was brought, brought to my attention that, that if, you if you fly the United, United States flag, flag at nighttime, nighttime it needs to be lights, lights on it. And, and I, don't I don't believe that we have, have any lights that are on our town, town flags uh, in, front in front of town hall or at the school. school. You do? I don't think the school does. Randy, anything you would like on the agenda? No, thank you. Exactly. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, select board future discussion. Select board members liaison reports. I think nothing exciting happening yet on any of our committees. Is no, that true? I think just the Russell School Committee has been working on their um, CPA um, application and all that. <clears throat> go into executive session. I need a motion Jane, to... Before you do that, can I just, I just, I don't know if you got the, um, just the announcement that uh, for warming centers for this weekend. I heard it from Mike, but it hasn't been made. Did he mention it? Did he mention not it? Not here, oh, no. Not here, okay. So I just want to just make sure you all know that um, from uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 to 7 to have the public, public library is open. Saturday 10 to 3, so people can go there. They have the senior center located here. Their normal business hours do not include the time frame for which this whole part is scheduled and therefore is not available. Uh, residents have the option of visiting the Hampshire Mall. This is discussions with Lynn. Um, located at 367 Russell Street during the hours of 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Sunday 11 to 5 p.m. And in the event that anyone is unable to find a warming space, and need relief after hours, the lobby of the public safety complex, which is located at 15 E Street, is available from 9 to 6. So that is a, it is on the website. Um, there are some, um, some more guidance on how to uh, deal with extreme cold weather. Um, so I just want to make sure you guys can Thank you. Joyce, do you have any announcements today? I don't, I don't tonight. tonight. Anything else? All right. 
may I have a motion to enter into executive session for the following purposes? For MGL C30A 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with non union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiation with non union personnel. Town Treasurer per MGL C30A 21A7. University of Massachusetts Annual Agreement per MGL C30A 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation, namely Britain versus Bombardier et al. Land Court Docket Number 21, Miscellaneous 000452DRR, and HAP Community Housing Services Incorporated versus the Town of Hadley, Western Housing Court Docket Number 19H79CV000509, and not to reconvene in open session. So moved. Second. Second. Roll call vote, please. Roll call Keegan. Yes. Chandler. Yes. 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 Parsons. Yes. And Isaac. Yes. Thank you.